This video is going to be a little bit on the longer side, so feel free to skip the intro if you don't want context. But if you are someone who is migrating from Nextcloud and are getting a bunch of internal server error messages that are frustrating and maybe you're going from one to the next, this video is for you. There are two or three major causes that I identified for why this might be taking place. The first one is the database can't connect. You will need to know your old database credentials. If you're migrating databases, the Nextcloud version you're running doesn't run on the exact same software. That means things like the PHP version that you're running on your new setup might be a little bit different. And there might be a final possibility, possibility that you're just running into issues with your permissions not being correct. This video is going to go over how to migrate the database, uh, your files, and actually even to upgrade your instance. Because what we're going to do, one of those major causes of problems that you probably are running into is that your version is not exactly the same. And these setup steps will address that so that you won't have the internal server errors. Uh, but there is a cost to this, and that is that Nextcloud recommends that you don't do manual upgrades, which we are going to be doing. I'm pretty well protected from this because I'm migrating from Raspberry Pi, which was bare metal, over to a virtual machine, and I will be able to do green-blue deploys. So if I want to run an upgrade, I can clone my instance. And actually, I would need to show you from here. I can right click and I can clone my instance. I can run tests on the clone to make sure that the upgrade works fine. And then I can, I can push that clone into production and then archive the old version of my server. Uh, if you're running Docker containers, you can do something similar just by backing up your entire Docker container. The virtual machine system actually works very well for me because I have more, I own more CPU cores than I have brain cells, and that is 71 just from years of being, um, you know, it might be 73 from all the years of collecting junk IT that I can now deploy this kind of stuff on. What we're going to cover, just so you know, in the description. You can click to any of these at any time. You'll need specific assets. Next, VM config uh, overview, so like how this system is configured. Quick security setup. We're going to do the, a really quick thing because people skip over that stuff. Packages and dependencies, what you need to install. Web server setup. Deploying a fresh instance of Nextcloud because we're running an upgrade, so we're going to be using the newer code base importing your data from your old system, importing your database from your old system, and then running the manual Nextcloud upgrade. And then we're gonna test it out and briefly recap. As I said, this video will be a little bit on the longer side because this is not a simple or easy process. Even if it looks like in this video, I put 40 hours plus into figuring out how to do this. So, this isn't for the faint of heart. Be very, very cautious to follow these directions very carefully. Now let's get into it. Before you back up, you will need to put your existing Nextcloud instance into maintenance mode. You will need to export your SQL file backup from your database, like export the database into a SQL file. Back up your data directory preserving the timestamps. You can do this either with rsync onto an external drive, or you can use a tarball. I found that rsync over the network doesn't work just because of permissions between the two systems. And you will need from your, from your existing setup, your config.php file. It's gonna make things a lot simpler. It has stuff like password, and I didn't even know how you'd recreate that. So like I said, uh, I'm using a thumb drive. I'm not going to cover over. I'm not going to cover how you can set this up with a tarball, but 
If you know how to tarball files, chances are you can figure it out preserving your timestamps on all of your files. For your virtual machine, you will need virtualization running on your CPU. You'll need to set that up in your BIOS. So go ahead and do that before you even think of doing something like this. For some reason, most motherboards come with that turned off. And you will want to install all extended features for VirtualBox, especially if you're going to use a thumb drive like I'm doing in this video. And I'll just show you right here, the thumb drive is connected. This might be specific to my instance. Uh, so I can right click on that and then connect this PNY USB so that that will be working. The only reason why that works is because I have the extended extras installed, which are closed source software but I will only need that for the setup. You'll need to pick an OS and have the server version of that downloaded. Th these will be running headless and I can kind of go over everything that is here and we'll go into settings. Under system, we have processor. I allowed two cores and the only reason why this is possible is because I enabled virtualization on my motherboard and clicked on these two options right here. For USB, I set this to USB 3. And then for network, I set this to bridged adapter. This is necessary because we're going to be SSH-ing into this server so that I don't have to use this tiny little screen for everything since we can't install the enhanced graphics on a server. So to get started, with the Ubuntu setup, now that that is installed, I'm not going to be going over how to do the installation of Ubuntu. Get that cleared. And we are now logged into Ubuntu. The basic security setup stuff that you will need, and this will bite you in the butt if you don't follow it, is absolutely the sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. And the reason why that will bite you in the butt if you don't do it is because it will stop you halfway through your installation most likely and make you do these steps regardless of if you do them right now or not. We will have to run sudo apt upgrade partway through this process because we're going to be adding a PPA repository uh, which is why I do recommend that you use Ubuntu for this particular setup. Um, while we're waiting for this to run I should mention that I gave this server 376 megabytes of RAM. Uh, Raspbian never got over two gigs for me. So I just figured I'd give more than more than I need. Two gigs for PHP and then one gig for overhead over time on the server installation in case the code base explodes in Linux like it has been trending. All right, now that that's finished running with our upgrades. I'd like to install NetTools. And the reason why this is helpful is it allows us to see this computer's IP address so we can SSH in. And that is you have to install NetTools and then you type in ifconfig and then we will see right over here, 192.168.1.127. So now we can open up our window and log in. SSH, SS, that's weird, it's not typing. SSH, Nick at 192.168.1.27 and I do want to remember this fingerprint. 
All right, and we are in. I'm going to clear this screen. This other tab seems to have crashed, but we will need two tabs for this process just to save me a little bit of time as we go through this. Now that we're in, we do want to set up a firewall. These are a few really quick commands that will make sure that if you do make this computer public on the internet that it won't get hacked. A lot of times what people will do is they will go around scanning for ports to gain access. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to promote myself to root user. You may not want to log in as root for this process, but I just don't want to keep on typing in my password all the time and this will take care of it. The ports that we're allowing are 8000 which is kind of specific for my instance because I can't use port 80 on my local network it's being used by another service and I can't even use it over the internet because my ISP has it blocked. Once we have all of those ports enabled especially 22 you don't want to you don't want to enable the firewall without port 22 opened while you're SSH'd into a server because it will kick you out and you won't have a way back in. Once that's done, you can enable. They do give you this warning that it may disrupt your existing SSH connection, but that has been addressed. And we can go through and click status and we can see that all ports on IPv4, yeah, IPv4 and v6 are enabled. Post note here, I was supposed to allow port 8080 because that is what we're going to be using for the rest of this guide. So just ignore port 8000 and enable 8080. If you need to close down a port, the command is UFW deny. Now the last quick security control is we don't want people logging in directly with root permissions. Like I said, people go around scanning different IP addresses and services on the internet, and we don't want them to be able to just guess that the best permissions they can get are root. So we will change permit root login to no, write that file out, and then exit, and then we will restart that service, and that is your basic security setup. Of course, you want your password to be extremely secure if you're doing this, and even better are GPG keys. But this is like just really base security that you'll need to do. Next, we are going to the next section, which is basic required packages. And for this, we need to add PPAs because we are going to be running this on the latest and greatest version of PHP. Oops. that Nextcloud runs on so that we have maximum security updates and top performance. This is going to save us a little bit of package, package install from PHP 7.4, which was the previous supported version. Now that we have the PPAs added using sudo apt, add apt repository PPA Andre J forward slash PHP, we need to update so that apt Ubuntu's package manager can actually add files from that repo repository. We're getting some Apache 2 errors that is fine. That is partly because my that is partly because I think port 80 is being used on my network and I, I just don't think this server can support it. Like I said, we need to upgrade five packages. So we will type in sudo apt upgrade and then add the Y switch so that it automatically says yes to any questions that are asked over the course of this process. And I think I already, yeah, I already installed PHP 8. I think I will need to add this as a blog 
entry on my website so that you can go through and see all of these commands because this is a bit much to follow. Sudo apt upgrade, okay, so I already did that. Now we can install the basic dependencies and at this point we're about to be ready to roll with the web server setup, which is the next section. I just have to add these dependencies and then add in PHP 8.0 APCU, which is one of the services that I had installed on my old server, which I think is required to run the upgrades. It's the OCC, own cloud something script. It, it helps to do the upgrades. And that concludes all of our base packages that we need to install for the rest of this to work. Like I said, Apache 2 had an error, so I need to enable port, change port 80 to a different port. In this case, I'm going to have this server listen to 8080. And so this is the, um, actually I'll, I'll navigate to this file so you can see I'm doing sudo nano, sudo nano to the correct file locations, but you can also go cd etc apache2 and then you can see all of these files are in here. So this is ports.conf is the document that I just edited and you could also change directory to sites available and then nano default.conf this we will also change to 8080 and as long as we are in this folder there's a couple other housekeeping items that we may need to address actually in default.conf I need to change this because I am not going to have the document root be www it will be www html and then next cloud then we need to edit this file which is apache2.conf give it the explicit path etc apache2 apache2.conf just because I don't like that HTT access error and it drives me up a wall trying to figure it out every time. If you're getting an HTT access error where your files are exposed to the internet, this is how you fix it. You go down to this area in apache.conf, var www. I will release this in a different video because I think it will be helpful for a lot of users. And that is everything that we need to set up the web server. There is one more thing that I do want to address before we skip on to the next section. And I couldn't figure out, this is probably the best place to put it. We're going to change directory to etc php 8.0. And by the way, if you ever like lose track of this stuff and you don't have it memorized, you can see you can navigate through these folders one at a time. 8.0 ls cd apache2 until you find this file right here. It's php.ini and the complete path is right here etc php 8.0 php.ini Nextcloud will not run properly without at least 512 megabytes of RAM and you will get errors if you don't do this. So it's better just to handle it right off the bat. I'm going to give it two full gigs of RAM. I don't ever expect it to use that much. I expect it to cap out around 512. But that should be pretty good. And there's one other thing that I want to do and that is to find the area that handles uploads. We are using this as a file server, so remember that you do want to be able to upload more than two megabytes at a time. 
I'm going to give it two gigs just for plenty of overhead. And then max files uploaded at once, I will give that 240. Uploading a lot of memes. That's what that's going to be used for, mostly memes. Go ahead and exit, and then we can run. this command right here, which is sudo systemctl restart apache2. We shouldn't get an error this time because we changed those ports to 8000, but by doing this now, all of our changes will take effect, including that php.ini file. On the next section, we're going to be talking about the fresh Nextcloud setup. Before we can go through and bring over our old files, we do need to install or at least add the files for a fresh Nextcloud setup. And this can be added by going to var www.html and then curling for the latest release, which for me is 23.0.0. .0 .0. All of these numbers are going to depend on when you actually uh, do this install. Like uh, PHP 8.1, I would imagine, is probably just months away from being released for Nextcloud servers moving forward. So you may want to install those PHP versions with dependent packages. This part, of course, is identical to if you were doing a completely fresh setup, which is considerably easy than, easier than what we're doing today. And I do have a video on how to do that that, that I made almost uh, about a year and a month ago. Now we can make the data directory for Nextcloud. And then we need to set www-data as the owner of that file. We need to back out of, if you went in, like if you say went change directory to Nextcloud and you're in here when you created that data folder, you will need to back out here uh, to bare www HTML for these next commands where we are going to set the read write permissions for these folders, which is type D, we're doing 750, and then for type F, we're doing 640. Nextcloud automatically handles this during updates, but for us, because we're doing this entirely manually, it's good to follow this step. And that is it as far as fresh setup of Nextcloud. But now we're getting onto the part where the reason why I had this additional tab open we have that USB connected and we need to be able to transfer our files over. So we're going to make a directory that we will mount the USB to and then we are going to mount the USB using sudo mount ext4 dev sdb. Now we can go over to that folder and verify that everything is in there. So we go ls, we see nextcloud, this is my backup right here, and then this is my SQL dump. Now that that's connected, we can import everything. Now we can import everything that is important for our use. The first thing is, is we need the config.php file. This is where all of your critical stuff is controlled. I probably won't show you what my file looks like, except maybe a, I'll use GIMP and screenshot it or something. So we'll copy that over. Then we will change the ownership of that over to data, because uh, by creating it, by copying it like that, we actually made root the owner. And then we will edit this file. Again, I'm not going to show you this. I'll probably take a screenshot of it and then drop it in the video at this point. What we need to do is we need to change the server to 192.168 
0.1.21 colon 80.80 to match our specific configuration here. You go ahead and save that out. It should be on the line that says trusted domains array. Now for rsync, the Nextcloud team recommends that you use the T switch. I actually didn't do that when I took my ba backup. So I just have rsync, capital A, lowercase a, X, and then the media backup, which matches with the USB location that I showed you earlier. Where that, where that was actually mounted. That's uh, Nextcloud Dear Backup. So these are identical. And then it goes to ver www.html data. This is an important step. You do need all of the files from this. You can't just bring over the user files. Otherwise, this whole process won't work. I tried. It was kind of a nightmare to, to fix, and it, it didn't even uh, work right. So you have to bring this stuff over right now uh, before we do the next cloud manual upgrade. So go ahead and run that. This is going to be a lot of files. It's going to take a while. I'm probably even going to have to pause the video at one point just to make sure that that finishes running. But while that's going, we can start doing the database setup. You will need to be logged in as root to do this stuff, or you'll need to run sudo, but I recommend root. So I just ran a sudo su command, and we're going to copy the database file from the flash drive over to our MySQL folder. It's not absolutely necessary you bring that over there, but it just made it a little bit handier for me to know that I can transfer the, the stuff into the database without any kind of uh, weight or anything. And then we log into the database. If you have a Nextcloud database, like say you were doing a complete setup and you created a database and named it Nextcloud, at this point you have to drop it. I'm going to go ahead and drop this now, even though it's going to say there is no database. Then we have to create a database. And just so you can kind of see here in SQL, if you forget to close out your statements, you'll get this little arrow here. That is no big deal. You just add a semicolon, press enter, and the command will run just fine. Now we need to create a user. You want this to be exactly the same as your old user on your old database. So you have create user NC admin identified by password. I'm not going to show you what I'm using on mine. So basically, this is, this is the best example I can give you. This will have to match. And then you will need your credentials, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, so that you know what that password is to get everything lined up. This should also be in your config.php file in your Nextcloud root, the file that I told you that I wasn't going to show you there is some important stuff in there. So now I'm going to create my user. I'm going to I'm going to cut out this part of the video. Now that I hid my password information, you can see the next part is to grant all privileges to your admin. Again, this is your admin, not mine, with grant option. And I'm going to pause so you can't see my database username. And finally, the last two commands I can show you just fine. We're going to flush privileges, which is very similar to a new setup. And then we're going to exit. All right, now the, the database is created. We're going to go ahead and we're going to import the old database running this command here. MySQL user root, password, nextcloud, 
and we're going to import that into the next cloud database we just created. This takes just a, actually a couple seconds because this server has a decent amount of processing power. And it's done. Let's take a look at the rsync and see what the status is. Okay, so that's still going. Now we can go over while that completes. This is one of the most frustrating errors I've ever had. Uh, there's like no detail and there's no error logs that I could find or, or very sparse error logs that I could find to figure out what this problem was. This is caused by an issue with the database not connecting the way it should. We'll go back over and we will check the status of our rsync and it's still running. If you want to see all the files it's transferring, then you just add a V here, so AAVX. I don't recommend that. It makes the transfer incredibly slow. So I'll see you back in a couple minutes. So the marathon is almost over. What we've done is we've done a basic server setup. We brought in a new version of Nextcloud with the new code base. We merged over our old data and our old database. And now we need to make sure that our old data is has the correct permissions as we set earlier during basic setup. We're going to back out here, next cloud, into the HTML folder, and we're going to give proper permissions, 750. This is gonna take a minute to run, so I'm probably gonna pause it here, just so you don't have to wait. There's a lot of different files in my next cloud instance. And one more time to set the permissions to 640. This also will take a bit of time to run. Now that that's done, we have to run a script and it will only run, on my, my instance at least, if I'm in ver www.html nextcloud, we're going to list out all of the files in this folder. We're going to be running this program right here, OCC. I've tried calling this file directly by doing the full link ver www.html nextcloud. It does not work for me. So I have to navigate into the folder and then run this command right here, which is sudo u data php define enable OCC upgrade. And it looks like it gave me an error. What does this, what is the cause of this error? Sorry about that, as you can probably tell by the error on this screen, by running this command right here, it threw an error because I missed a very small step. And this is kind of why this is a not for the faint of heart type job. Even the smallest little single step in this video can throw this whole thing off. So now we can run this sudo uh, data PHP define uh, OCC upgrade. So we're doing this with APC enabled. I, you could probably add that to environmental var variables, but I'm just gonna call it explicitly. And now the upgrade will run. This is gonna take a couple minutes to a couple hours. Depending on your setup, according to Nextcloud, for me it takes a few minutes, but it is long enough that I will need to pause the video to save you some of your time. All right, we're looking good. It looks like it finished. And we can go over to our web browser and type in 192.168.1.27 and then go to port 8080 to connect to the web server. And it's in maintenance mode. So we have to turn that off really quick uh, by, in my case, I'm going to go into config, config.php, we'll edit this file. I'm not going to show this to you, but I will show you a screenshot of what this looks like. And we're going to change the line that says maintenance from true to false. All right, now that that's changed, we can Restart Apache system CTL, restart Apache 2, 
and we can go back over to our web server and everything is just fine, working just fine. I'm going to log in and show you that this actually is working fully. All right, we're logged in. Everything should be running really, really quickly. External hard drives aside. And everything is running incredibly quick. You can see this is much faster than my Raspberry Pi install. And it's an incredibly complex process. It's a little bit of new setup, a little bit of official migration stuff that you need to do in order to make this all work. But if you do have questions, and I'm sure some of you, if you've made it this far in this video, are going to have questions, please leave them down below. Like I said, I spent 40 to 50 hours working on this project, so there's a good chance that I've stumbled across a piece of documentation or a question or something that you may need access to. Uh, so don't be shy. I do try and stay on top of my YouTube comments. With all of that said, thanks for stopping by. This is Nick signing out.